If you're looking to play Metroid Prime 1 through 3 with mouse and keyboard via Dolphin, you've come to the right place. In 2018, I planned to stream Metroid Prime off of the Metroid Prime trilogy over on Go to Bedcast, but I didn't want to use motion controls for two hours a night. That's when I found Shion's standalone Dolphin mod, otherwise known as Prime Hack, and this is a mod to play the Metroid Prime trilogy with the keyboard and mouse. I made a previous video about this, but it's pretty out of date, so it's time to get up to speed on the current version. Let me show you how to install it. What you're gonna need, Prime Hack, Prime Hack Updater, Prime Hack Controller Profiles, as well as your own Metroid Prime Trilogy ISO. First step is to download PrimeHack.zip and unzip it and place it where you want. If you've used Dolphin before, you'll have a Dolphin folder in the Documents folder. Rename it so that PrimeHack's Dolphin can make its own folder here without issues from the other folder. It'll save you a lot of headache. Then download PrimeHack Auto Updater and place it in the Dolphin folder. Run it once even if you have the latest version. Third, download ControllerProfiles.zip. This will come with a bunch of profiles as well as an EXE that will automatically put profiles in the right location. But if you want to move them manually, this is the default location. And finally, now we set up Dolphin. If you renamed your Dolphin folder and have this new one made from scratch, then Dolphin settings will already be optimized for the game. Personally though, of course, I did set my resolution to auto window size, turned on full screen and borderless full screen, and force 16x9. Then go to controllers, under Wii modes go to configure, and load Metroid Prime Trilogy V2. If you don't see this, you didn't put the controller profiles in the right folder. Now if you plan to play Metroid Prime Corruption, you also gotta make sure that you set your motion controls. The most efficient way to do so is setting them to your mouse scroll wheel, either up or down like I'm showing right now. You only have to specifically set these ones that I'm setting here. Then go to the top for Prime Hack settings for specific options, like sensitivity, binding for beams and visors, and an FOV slider. Now we can start up the game, but we still have some settings to adjust in game real quick. In the options, change your sensitivity to advanced and turn off HUD lag. And that's all you need to get started. As of this video, the latest release was 0.2.1, so keep an eye on which version is the latest for you, and visit the Prime Hack Discord if you have questions and need troubleshooting, or to keep up to date on the project just in case there are any big changes that can't be covered by the auto-updater. If that's all you wanted from this video, then there you go, but I'm gonna continue on with a review of the controls and highlight the changes from the last video I made. So when I first released a video on this, I had played the entirety of Metroid Prime on stream using this mod. But now I've played through a good bit of Metroid Prime again using this updated version of the mod. Mouse and keyboard work is another method of playing, but some quality of life options that natively come along with it turn it into a really enjoyable way of playing the games. The Metroid Prime games aren't typical FPS games, as moving forward while clicking on enemy heads isn't really the objective. You're given a breadth of tools to use and are challenged to utilize them against obstacles. Those challenges become more varied the further you get into the games. You may think that with this precision aim you'd never use the lock-on, but the lock-on function does more than just auto-aiming, so you're still going to use it for situations. For example, such as dashing around enemies. So even with using the mouse to aim, I think the most beneficial part of this mod is the keyboard controls. You can bind different buttons to your beams and visors, and switching is instant. The intuitive controls make the more challenging areas of the games that require the constant switching much more efficient to manage with zero fight back from how you're adapting to the controls. Also, I didn't really sing the praises of wider FOV, but I can't get enough of how nice the wider FOV can be. Now for the changes that have been made since the last video, just so we're clear on a few things. Metroid Prime 3 is now totally supported. Like I said though, the motion control puzzles in the game require you to map some movements in Dolphin, just like I showed earlier. Metroid Prime 1 doesn't have that press a button to move horizontal thing anymore, and the way you change sensitivity has changed offering way more options. Beam switching doesn't have to go through a menu anymore, removing all of my past complaints about it. And you can just remap the buttons to whatever you want. And again, there's a nice FOV slider. There is a limit to them because going too high will cause visual anomalies, but I think they go more than high enough. I keep mine at 85. There's also the option for inverted mouse controls if that's just how you roll. Once again, thank you for watching and checking out the mod. It's been a godsend for me as it's helped me really enjoy these games, and I'm more than happy to share this mod with anyone that's interested. Now have fun and remember to check out the Discord if you want to stay up to date on how the project's coming along, or if you just need troubleshooting. Thank you for watching.